Well, hello, folks out there in YouTube land. We've got a big show lined up for you. All right. Yeah, the Vols are trending for a five-star, and actually, I think they're trending for a couple. We're going to do a uh, transfer portal and recruiting update. There's a lot going on right now. I know the season's over officially since the uh, national championship game is over. A national title was handed out. It's tainted. How dare you? But they won it. So you can't, I don't think they can take it away from them, but you know, they may try. It's got to be America's team. We'll see how that plays out. But anyway, let's get into uh, what's going on with the Vols and this transfer portal situation. Now, one of the things that we've talked about quite a bit is offensive tackle and offensive guard. We really need to get at least two offensive linemen out of the portal, and they need to be really good. We've got a what I think is a very special quarterback, the number one rated player in the country, according to some uh, services. And Nico, I'm not about to leave you. I think he's going to be sensational. He scored four touchdowns in his very first game that he started, and that was against Iowa, which had a top 10 defense. So I thought that was pretty outstanding. He didn't get very good uh, time in the pocket. Their front seven was very good, and they put a ton of pressure on him. He was uh, at times running for his life, but he ran in the end zone three separate times running for his life. So he, he's got the it factor. You know, we didn't have to kick any field goals, and that was uh, the great thing about Hendon Hooker, why we scored so many points, 46 points a game on average. Man, <laughs> back in 2022 is we rarely had to settle for a field goal because he would just figure out a way to score. He was just one of those guys. Nico just showed you in his very first game ever that he's that type of guy too. So we need to protect him. You know, when you have a valuable asset, you should protect them. We can't do that with the offensive line that we had in that ball game. That's not going to work. You're not going to make a 12-game uh, season, especially in the SEC, with that kind of uh, unacceptable blocking. So we are looking at a couple of big-time uh, recruits in the portal, one of which is a five-star, and that's Zalance Hurd. As you can see, um, he is listed as a 73% chance to uh, pick the Vols, and Oklahoma is at 23%, basically. So we are definitely trending uh, towards uh, picking up Zalance Hurd. He would be a great get for us. He is a big-time tackle body, six foot five, over 300 pounds, and he was the top recruit at LSU last year. Now, LSU happens to have a very good offensive line, a couple of real strong tackles, and he wants to play left tackle. And my understanding is John Campbell is open to possibly moving from left tackle to right tackle. Now, that's just what I'm hearing. What's the word on the street? I have not had that confirmed, but if he was willing to do that, I think we could get Zalance heard. I think we'd be willing to pay him a reasonable amount of money to come here and I think he would be an immediate upgrade for us, especially at a position, a key position like offensive tackle. And I know there's a big perception that right tackle doesn't make near the money that left tackle does in the NFL. You'll find that's not necessarily the case. Actually, right tackle makes a ton of money in the NFL. And if you don't think so, realize that Darnell Wright did exactly that. He went from left tackle to right tackle, and he got picked 10th in the NFL draft, and he's a very rich man now. A right tackle is very important because there has been a change in mindset that how you stop slants, you know, basically where the guy darts across, and it's very hard to stop a slant. If it's thrown right, you almost can't do it. There's thinking in football that where you want to do is rush straight into the face of the quarterback from his strong side because then you block the slant. You're coming at him like this. He can't throw through you, obviously. So right tackle actually is starting to become more and more prominent, and you're seeing that in college and in the NFL. So I think these players have got it in their mind, oh, I must play left tackle. There's tons of money playing right tackle. So anyway, and it would help your team because you're dealing with some kids that feel that way. So we'll see how this plays out, but I like our position for Zalance Hurd. I think that would be a huge pickup for us. Another offensive lineman that we have got coming uh, this weekend on a visit is this fella Percy Lewis um, out of Mississippi State. He was a four-star in high school. He's got a 31% chance of committing to the uh, Vols and a 35% chance of going to Auburn. So it's, um, you know, it's pretty much even. He is one big dude. He's six foot eight, about 360 pounds. And this guy in 235 snaps allowed one sack, which is outstanding. 
So he would be a real nice pickup as well. So those are the two right now that we're really uh, trying to get a hold of and get them to commit. I'd be pleased with both. That would really secure our tackle situation in a major way and help protect Nico going into 2024. Now let's talk about uh, George McIntyre. Now I will go ahead and tell you, I've already given a crystal ball for him to commit to the Vols over the next following weeks. He is a uh, five-star quarterback out of Tennessee, so he would be staying home, which is rare for us to have a five-star in state. And this guy, you know, he's got, he's got NFL arm talent. He's got touch. He's very athletic. He can run and would be a really nice pickup for us, especially for our recruiting class. And usually the quarterbacks, they like to commit early and start recruiting on behalf of the team. They, they want to get the players they want. Now, I'll go ahead and tell you that the experts have got Alabama as an 80% chance of picking him up. I think that's flawed because I think it's old. It's from old crystal balls and old predictions. But it's not a good choice for him to go to Alabama for one very simple reason. They literally just got a five-star quarterback in their 2024 class, which is Julian Sayan. And so that guy's going to be a year ahead of him, one year. So he's going to already know the system. He's going to be one year bigger and stronger. And he's also getting NIL money and expected to uh, contribute. That's going to be really hard for George McIntyre to break in because he's going to be trying to compete against a sophomore who's going to be there two or three years, and McIntyre could be sitting on the bench. Any of you folks remember Ty Simpson? He was a big-time recruit out of Tennessee, went to Alabama. He's not seen the field at Alabama, and he's already been there two years. So at some point, he'll probably be transferring, I would guess. We'll see how it plays out, but uh, – He's not really seen the field at all to speak of. And the other team that was in on George McIntyre was LSU, and they just got a five-star as well for the 2025 class, which is Bryce Underwood. So that eliminates them completely. So now you're looking at Alabama and Tennessee. Common sense would tell you he would pick Tennessee. But we'll know in a, in a week or two or three, something along those lines, based on what we're hearing. Now, if I'm wrong, and the experts think I am, where would you go next for a quarterback for 2025, which is a great year for a guy to come in because Nico will be a junior that year. Means he's basically probably going to last through junior, and then he's going to go to the NFL based on what I can tell, if he plays to the level we expect. So that means you'd have one year to get your feet wet, and most freshmen don't play anyway as a quarterback. And then your sophomore year, you're ready to go, and the big dog's out of the way. Now, you're going to have to compete with others, obviously, at any school. You're going to have to win out. But you really don't want to be competing against somebody that's getting millions of dollars in IL and is, uh, you know, all SEC. So it would make a lot of sense for Georgia to pick the Vols. Now, again, if we don't get him, who would we go after next? I would go after Deuce Knight, who actually very much wanted to uh, commit to the Vols. But I don't think the Vols were all in on him because of George McIntyre. They were kind of playing both sides of that. And uh, he wanted somebody that really wanted him, which makes sense. He is just outside of five-star. He is a very high four-star. I've watched him play. He's a terrific player, and he would fit our system really well. There's been some debate about which player would fit our system better. I've almost leaned towards thinking Deuce Knight would because he is so fast. And he's a very good quarterback. I think he's going to be outstanding, and he would fit our offense. So if George McIntyre doesn't pick the balls, I would go hard after Deuce Knight, who has committed to Notre Dame. But he originally wanted to pick the ball. So I would really go after him and try to flip him, especially since it's early on. I think you'd have a shot to do that. If not him, I know there's a lot of talk about this fella. And that's Madden. I'm not about to leave you. And it's Iamaliava. I know how to say it. Calm down out there. There'll be somebody out there in the comments, it's Iamaliava, how dare you? I know, I know. I just like saying I'm not about to leave you. Anyway, six foot three, 185. He is a four-star quarterback. He's currently ranked in a top 300, but a lot of people think he's going to uh, fly up the board. So there are some possibilities right there. Deuce Knight would be the guy I'd go after first, though, if George McIntyre does not pick the Vols. He just, he just strikes me as another Hinton Hooker, and you, anybody like Hinton Hooker, you're not going to go wrong with in this system. He's perfect for it. So there's two five stars that we uh, may very well get over the coming uh, days and weeks, which would be fantastic. We did just pick up a, a cornerback in Jalen McMurray, who was out of uh, Temple, and he's a good, solid player. He was all-conference um, AAC, and you can see we've picked up, uh, looks like, three different uh, defensive backs. Jermod McCoy, who was out of uh, Oregon State, 
Jacoby Thomas, who we've uh, taken a look at him, and I think he's going to be a good, solid player for us at safety. So we have picked up three defensive backs, but we need to start picking up some offensive linemen, especially with Gerald Mincy leaving. We were not expecting that. And that has to do with that whole uh, rules change where now you can just transfer anytime you want. And that didn't surprise me at all. You just got to find one judge that thinks this is uh, kind of like a job, and he's going to uh, side with the player every time. So transfers are going to become the norm at this point, and this is an opportunity for the Vols to improve where they really need to improve the most. I would consider offensive line, because you have a Nico, I would consider offensive line the most important position to improve. I know our defensive backfield has been our Achilles heel, and uh, even though I know we looked good against Iowa, Iowa's a horrible defense. They were pathetic. And they didn't have their starting quarterback. They had a backup quarterback because McNamara got hurt early on in the season. So they were just pedestrian. How they won 10 ball games, it just has to do with strength of schedule is the only thing I can figure and a really good defense. But we had no trouble beating the crap out of them. So I don't think that was a very good test. So I would not consider our defensive secondary to be fixed by any stretch. But I would focus on the off, especially now that you've already picked up three reasonably solid defensive backs to go along with our young guys. We got a lot of four stars that uh, have higher upsides than the guys that left. You know, we had, I think, seven guys leave from the defensive backfield. We were pretty loaded back there as far as depth. We just didn't have a ton of talent, not high-end talent anyway. So now the focus is going to be on offensive line, and we need to spend some time and money there. And uh, this herd guy would be a big answer, especially if Campbell moved to right tackle and we were solid there. That would take care of your tackles really well. Campbell is rock solid, and uh, Hurd, he might be our best offensive lineman if he was to choose the Vols. He would certainly be our most highly rated one, for sure. So I did want to do an update on this transfer portal and recruiting and all that, and we're going to be finding out a lot over the coming days and weeks. If you've not subscribed, it's on your right, my left. Just hit this little button right here. I would appreciate it. Doesn't cost you anything. Helps me out. And right over here is the most recent video YouTube thinks you'll enjoy based on your viewing history. And we'll see you next time on Sports Talk Jay.